One of the most common questions I get asked is whether Detect3D supports different types of detector models from different manufacturers. Typically someone will be working on a project where a certain flame detector is used and they want to know whether they can use Detect3D with that detector. The answer of course is yes, but first let me show you what's possible by way of a demonstration. And for that I'm going to use the FPSO model I created in the previous video. You can see here that I added six flame detectors in the project. And if we select one, we can see its unobstructed field of view. And of course its obstructed field of view, which we're now familiar with using ray casting. In fact in this video the most interesting one is the unobstructed field of view because it shows the field of view of the flame detector model that's used. And we can see that here. It's the Insight Numerics Detect 3D default. And we can have a look at it in more detail by opening up the manufacturer database. If we select the model, we can see the stats which define the field of view. And if we press view, we can see a much more easily understandable representation. On the left, we have some stats. In the middle, we have a plan view. And on the right, we have a side view. Looking at the plan view first, we can see the maximum range, which for this model is 65 feet. We can also see that the horizontal viewing angle is 45 degrees in each direction. The 20 degree number here represents the viewing angle where the detector's range equals the maximum range. In other words, it can see the full 65 feet from 0 to 20 degrees, but beyond 20 degrees its range reduces. This is typical for most flame detectors where their off-axis range is less than the on-axis range. For the side view we have a similar diagram, but the major difference is you can specify a different up and down viewing angle, which is again typical for flame detectors. Now the important point here is that we can edit all of these numbers, so you can create a wide range of flame detector models, and I'm going to show you how to do that here. So we just select add and select flame detector model, and we can see the stats now. I'm going to create a fictitious manufacturer called D3D Industries and a fictitious model, D3D001, and just add a description. I'm going to leave the properties mainly as they are. The only thing I'm going to change is the maximum range to 100 feet, and I can preview that and see it here, and then add it to the database. Returning to the project, I can now see that I can select this new model for this flame detector. I'm just going to do that, and then update the project takes a little bit of time as it's figuring out the ray casting. But now you can see the new unobstructed field of view which is visibly much larger than it was previously. This is to be expected because the flame detector now has a 100 foot field of view instead of a 65 foot and we can see the 65 foot fields of view of all the other flame detectors in the project. We can see this one is much larger and to better highlight that, I'm just going to change the color of that flame detector's field of view. I'm going to select a blue color, give it a little bit of transparency, just so you can see that highlight. So this demonstrates the fact that you can have different models in one simulation without any problem, but the real power is being able to change all the flame detector models at once. And I can easily do that by right-clicking, selecting Change All Models 2, and then selecting the new model that I created. You can see the project is automatically updating. The grayed out text means that the object is not up to date. The flame detectors are actually updating themselves in parallel. And all the coverage statistics are automatically updated. You can hear zeros down at 2% and three or more is up at over 70%. The contours and ISO volumes are also automatically updated. You can have a look at zero coverage, it's very small. And three or more, it's dominant in the fire zone. So this ability to change all the flame detector models to ones you've just created is really useful for a sensitivity test. Here I'm creating a new flame detector model. And I'm going to put this at 50% of the range of the one I just created before. I can use the previous one as a template and then just change the maximum range to 50 feet and then add that to the database. Back to the project, I can now change all flame detector models to the 50% range and the project's now all updating. 
you'll be able to see the ISO volumes automatically update and we expect the green to go down and the black to increase and we can see that here the zero coverage is much greater and the coverage of three or more is much reduced and that's obviously reflected in the coverage statistics for the fire zone if I take a quick look at the detectors field of view I can see they're much smaller than they were before now and I want to actually change them back to what they were before so I can change them back to the 100% range, so that's 100 feet and you can see the project all updating again as I said this is all done in parallel so you can see the flame detectors coming through as they're completed just updating the ISO volumes and fire zones now okay so we've just played around with the maximum range to this point but we can of course create something a little bit more interesting by changing more of the parameters I'm going to add a new flame detector model just change it to the fictitious D3D industries and call this one D3D002 I'm going to use the preview now to change certain parameters of the flame detectors field of view change the max range to 120 feet and update you can see the preview is automatically updated there edge efficiency I'm going to change down to 20 percent and this means that the drop off is going to be greater towards the edges you can see that here I'm going to change the horizontal angle next I'm going to select 60 degrees so 120 degree full angle and I also want to change the down angle now and the up angle I'm going to select say 6 degrees for the down angle and then let's make it 25 degrees for the up angle it's going to look a little funny uh, we can see this in 3D this is what it's going to look like when it's added to the project but it's good enough for now so I'm going to add that item to the database so let's select the flame detector 1 and now let's change the model to the one I just created I'm going to hit regenerate and you should see the unobstructed field of view change to the more unusual looking one that I just created okay there we go definitely see the change there in the shape of the field of view and we can of course just double check this by looking at the obstructed field of view checking all the ray casting is correct and this looks good you can just see a few rays coming through the railings there but generally it looks correct and it shows you that you can put weird and wacky looking flame detector models into Detect 3D and it will handle it just fine so we created three new models in this project and we can see them all here all these models are stored on your local machine which means you have access to them on other projects so you don't have to keep recreating them you can also export models and then import them into Detect 3D which is useful if one of your colleagues wanted a model that you had defined you can simply send them this file and they can load it in so you can see how Detect 3D is very flexible when it comes to creating new flame detector models and selecting them in the project let's not forget about gas detectors we've seen in the previous videos that you can add point and open path or line gas detectors in Detect 3D and I've added some here however gas detectors don't have a field of view so the options are somewhat more limited the gas mapping is performed using a spherical gas cloud of a certain diameter one thing you can do of course is to change the diameter of that gas cloud you're looking at but as far as the make and manufacture of the gas detectors well these make no difference in the Tech 3D it's just simply the size of the gas cloud to demonstrate that I've just changed the gas cloud size to 10 meters and you'll be able to see all the blue fields of influence update there so that concludes this video on detectors in Detect 3D I recommend that you work closely with flame detector manufacturers to get the properties of the fields of view correct. But for now I hope you see that you have great flexibility in creating new models and using them for your fire and gas mapping projects. 
Thanks very much for listening. My name is Oliver Haynes, and as always, you can download Detect3D by registering on insightnumerics.com.